Okay, good morning. Good morning. All right, so I'm motivated today because uh, it's cloudy and raining and dreary looking outside, but we're going to worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth through his word, through prayer, through just meeting together in fellowship. That's what we're going to do today. Um, Kato, can you do me a slight favor? And move that up a little tiny bit. I'll move it down too much. Because my head is going to be chopped off. Up. No. Chopped no. Off. Uh, up. Up. No, just. Uh, okay. I'm on the side now. <laughs> I shouldn't have touched it. Yeah. No. Not all the way. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's good. 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 We'll just leave it like that. <clears throat> All right. How are you guys doing today? Us? Yes. Fine. I heard you talking, Madeline. On with one of your teachers. Which class was it? Computer apps. Computer apps class. Okay. Caleb, you had band class today online. Mm -hmm. How was it this time? It's the third week now. All the problems. Fixed. You were able to hear each other in class? We didn't really do much. You didn't do much. No. Okay. I know. I know it's frustrating, right? We want to get back to normal. We want to uh, get our lives back to normal, right? I know Madeline's excited about one day soon um, being together back with her class so that you can uh, uh, do band practice together and hear one another. I know you missed that. So yeah. Cooper keeps saying that we're not listening to each other. That's why we're all um, not together when we're playing the song. But um, I think it's because of the network and stuff. You think it's because of the network, not because you guys are Yeah, because in listening. band class, we actually perform pretty well. You think so? Perform yeah. pretty well. I can't wait until y'all next concert. When is it supposed to be? Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. okay. Everything might have to be readjusted a little bit but I'm looking forward to to um, gathering back together again it's May for fourth May in May okay well in the meantime here we are today let's get started with praise and worship to God through song through the reading of his word and through prayer so that's the focus of the day now I ask what's the theme the theme is just uh, praise to God that's the thing today I I, uh, I just wanted to encourage you with his word um, today okay let's start with this song called oh praise the name I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus led and died for me, I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, the Savior still on a cursed tree. His body bound, his body bound, and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb, the entrance sealed by heavy stone, Messiah still, and all along. What are they talking about?
shall pierce the night, and I will rise among the saints. My gaze transfixed on Jesus' face. Yeah. Oh, Can you turn to 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6? <clears throat> hey, look here. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6. I can't have you not reading, Kay, because you're going to sit there and daydream. No, I'm not. Uh, well, I just want to make sure. Nothing right. wrong with reading. All right. Um, before we start reading, though, let's pray. <clears throat> Caleb, can you pray for this time? Wait, they're not there yet. Second Corinthians what? Second Corinthians four, one through six. We're gonna be reading several passages from four and five and a couple through six. Okay. Okay. Dear Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray that uh we'll get to school soon. And this virus will be over soon. And that People will be able to get back to their normal lives. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, even as we pray for just our own selves and our needs, which is fine, but just know that, um, <clears throat> uh, and today we're going to talk about God. And, uh, oh, well, all the time we're talking about God, but uh, may our prayers be expanded to not just our own needs. Right, and but the needs of those all around the world, and that God's name would be glorified. Right, it's not it's not just about what we want, really. Um, it, this is God's world. We're in it, and we have a purpose. Um, thanks to, thanks to Jesus, right, and we have a way, and we are saved, and uh, we want others to know this truth that they may have hope in the darkness of the difficulties and the times that they're in, that they may hold on to this hope and that they may know him. So uh, there's many things that we should be lifting up in prayer to God. But thank you, Caleb, for starting us off today. 
All right, Madeline, read 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6, and Caleb, you'll read afterward that. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. For we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves. Um, what? Jesus, we do not preach ourselves? Mm -hmm. For we do not preach ourselves, but, Jesus, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. All right, yes, thank you, Madeline. What's something that you noticed out of there that is saying about this world? Mm. It's saying that what does it mean verse 3 and even if our gospel is veiled it is veiled only to those who are perishing in the case of the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God Caleb what is that saying um, their idols blind them yeah, okay. Their idols blind them, and so therefore they can't do what? See the Lord, glory of the Lord. To keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Right? They, they can't see uh, what Jesus has done for them, and because uh, they're blinded by the God of this world. And right, we can be uh, uh, unfocused as well as we keep our as we as we focus our eyes on uh, our circumstances instead of on Christ. Uh, we can be um, unfocused as well, even we who know Him. So um, let's remember that God is holy, um, and so we're gonna sing this song called "Holy Is the Lord." Caleb, can you join me over here without all your uh, drapery? No, because. All right, so we're going to sing Holy is the Lord. So and, uh, today I'm just kind of mixing up the songs in between the verses as we sing, as we read his word. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. Right, we're focusing on Christ.
right? We want to fix our eyes on him and not on the circumstances in the world. Um, in fact, one of the ways that I did that was uh, right before coming on here, because I, I come on at noon. That's just the time that I sit um, to have, you know, some accountability and I put it out. No, no, no. Uh, well, there is a, uh, um, on USAG Degu's Facebook page, um, which is the page that we're all looking to for information about the coronavirus here in Daegu and on our military installation. Um, they were having a, uh, informational, monthly informational briefing this morning live, um, at 9 a.m. <clears throat> And um, I did not tune in yet. I'm going to watch the replay. Why? Because I knew that it would uh, it just take my focus off of what I planned on doing today. So sometimes you just got to not do what everyone else is doing and do what's best for you to stay focused on the Lord. So for me, that was because I used to try and stay. I wanted to be... Um, uh, I wanted to know what everybody else knew at the time that they knew it. And uh, that was actually um, kind of, it, it messed up my mind because I was focused on what was happening, what they said, and then I wasn't prepared. And it just, uh, that wasn't the best thing for me. So now I just watched the replay. I still know what's going on. And, um, uh, but for this time, I wanted to um, be mindful of what this time is and to prepare my mind. Um, so I wanted to remember that God is holy, not our situation, right? And we can be so consumed with what's going on in our situation that we forget that God is holy. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. He holds this all in his hands. It's not a surprise to him. So, uh, Kate, well, you're here. Do you want to read or you just want to play that? Ma Madeline, read. Um, now read uh, 2 Corinthians verse four, chapter 4. Starting 16 through 18. Read those two verses now. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal, and eternal way of glory. For we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are all right, yes, uh, and we're today we're just reading passages of God's truth, letting his words remind us of what to focus on and um, what to remember. So 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 11 says, I'll read that one. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For while we walk by faith, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are of good courage, and we sh would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord, and one day we will. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Verse 11, Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others, but we what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. Skipping down to 5, 14 and 15, Madeline. Of chapter 5. Yes, Madeline, I want you to follow along as I read instead of folding paper. For the love of Christ compels us. Because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those should live should should that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Caleb, who should we live for according to that passage? Christ. Why? Because he died for us. Yeah, he died for us. He died for all, so that so those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. 
Yes, that's right here in the text. Let's keep reading, though. Um, Malin, read 17 through 21 of chapter 5. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciled reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as the God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Just reading verse 21 again. For our sake he made him to be sin. He made him, talking about Jesus, he made him, he, God the Father, made him, God's son, Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin. Right? He was perfect. He knew no sin. He had never committed sin. He was completely perfect, the sacrificial lamb, so that in him, through Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. And that's actually the first words uh, in this song that you might have heard before called Jesus Messiah. He became sin.
Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. And again, the first line of that song came from 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I'm so thankful. Read now from 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. So now we turn to 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9. So today's point is, you know, that God is holy and uh, he has plans for us and he has left us loving words here in the Bible. So I just kind of looked around and um, found some texts that I hope would be encouraging to you. All right. First Peter 1, 3 through 9. What does that say? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy, inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Yes. Paul writes in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead.
Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Amazing. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost his grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost his grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Madeline, now I'll read First Peter two nine through ten. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. Um, can you skip down to uh, verse 24? Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Amen. Right? We, we put our confidence, hope, and faith in what Jesus has done. Right? Um, I'm thankful for that. Let's read 1 Peter 3.15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with, me with meekness and fear. Yes, and uh, I'll read my translation, which is ESV. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. So, um... To this watching world who uh, is looking online, um, looking at social media, looking at your life to see and they want to know about this hope that is in you, you who are followers of Christ. Um, may you be ready to um, make a defense when asked, you know, uh, for a reason, for the hope. How do you have the hope that you have? How do you have the faith that you have? How can you trust God in a time like this when you can't see the outcome? Um, these are questions that people might be wondering, especially if they know <clears throat> or you've told them or somehow they've seen you do things that seem like um, that, you, that make you a Christ follower, right? We want to give them a reason for the hope that is in us. Um, it, our, my reason is found in what Christ has done through me. I've been transformed. Once I've known that the, the things that he did, which I didn't fully understand at the time, but when I, when I realized, there was a moment when I realized that the, the stories that I was told about Jesus weren't just stories. It was truth, and he did it. He, he willingly gave himself up on the cross for me, when I realized that, that he died for me, he took my place for the sins that I have committed. He took my place because the punishment for sin is death. 
He took my place willingly on the cross, gave himself up as the perfect sacrifice so that I can be brought back into relationship with a holy, our holy God. You know, I, that was something I couldn't do on my own. But in his grace and mercy, great mercy, he saved me. And so that's the reason for my hope. And as people look at our lives and they wonder, how are you not panicked at the time like this? It could be this. It could be other issues that are going on in our lives. And I've had, I have had some. And I, and I do have prayer requests um, that uh, are personal and that I'm waiting on, an, on, uh, on God to come through in a way that I would like, you know, I, I do have that. Uh, but, I, but in all things, I recognize that God knows more than I do. And, and I recognize that when he does things, it's not just for me. It's for people around me. It's for people who are coming after me. It's for people who are watching me. Uh, God, God does a multitude of things with the things that he does. And so my prayer for myself is that I would, um, uh, just point others to him through through my life and I know you're seeing a piece of it now through a video uh, but uh, but for those who actually see me and know me and spend time with me I think they know that um, that it is the Lord that I look to like this time here on earth is just a shaping time that we may be refined made to look more like his son and in all things, not just in the things that go the way we plan, but in all things. And, um, and, and, and it is my focus and prayer that my children would also come to um, trust in the Lord just the same. And even more, that they may know him truly, not just with, a, with facts, but in every way that it shows in their life. And in their attitude and in their response to unexpected things it would just show like um, that's my prayer all right so Caleb thank you for playing with me this is the last song it's called um, yes and amen have you heard this song before no. I've sung it a lot at uh, at uh, various places and I'm, I'm happy to end with this song it's it's, it's talking about uh, God is faithful. There are things that He has promised, and uh, and they will. And, and actually, there's a passage that kind of goes with this. Um, it's in Second Corinthians one twenty to twenty two. Let me find that, read it to you, and then we'll sing this song. It's it's uh, by house fires I think not sure I'll put that on my blog along with the lyrics to all these songs and the Bible passages that we read today so that you can go over it again just to think about it and dwell on this truth that God has left us uh, 2 Corinthians 1 20 through 22 for all the promises of God find their yes in him that is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. And you know, I'm going to keep reading. And it is God who establishes, uh, establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us and who all, has put, also put his seal on us and, it has, and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. But I call God to witness against me. It was to spare you that I refrain from coming again to Corinth, not that... We lord it over your faith, but we work with you for your joy, for you stand firm in your faith. Okay, let me go back to verse 21. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed it. I'm sorry, let me go back to verse 20. For all the promises of God find their yes in him that is why it is through him that we utter our amen to god for his glory this section is talking about um was labeled here oh you know 
God of all comfort, Paul's changes change of plans, right? He what he did and that's recorded through the letters that he wrote to the different churches in the New Testament, is, you know, he lived his life for God and for the people who were coming to know God, that, he, that, they, might, um, that they might hold fast and firm to what, had, what they had been taught about God um, as they wait, right? Right now, we're kind of like waiting. We're waiting to see what will happen in, in various things in our lives. And as we wait, as we wait, I wait with hopes and, and in knowing that God, God is faithful. He is true. Um, what he says stands and he's doing a multitude of things. Like I know all these things because of things that he's done in my life things I've heard other people have proclaimed about him that he's done in their lives, the lives of the people as recorded here in the Bible here um, that I can read and kind of know and see over a long period of time what God has done, how he's come through, how he's saved, even though we're the ones that keep going away, keep going away, keep disobeying, and, and it's just amazing. So God, um, so that's that's who I try to live my life for and try to keep going back to. And I pray that you will do the same even in this time of difficulty that you might be in. So let these words encourage you. His, his words, uh, which he lovingly left for us, um, to that we may really know him. Let's read it and be encouraged by it.
promises God let's close in prayer God I thank you <clears throat> I thank you for today Lord um, I thank you God that you woke us up this morning I thank you God um, that we have food to eat we have clothes to wear hot water shelter um, a safe place to stay God, I, I, I thank you for the internet. I thank you for a computer, a cell phone, a guitar, Lord, music that people, your people have written uh, just in worship to you and put it out there for others to just connect with you through song, Lord. I thank you, God, for uh, my children. Uh, I thank you, God, for my son's willingness to uh, play the cajon with me. And, and I thank you, Lord, for just his willingness to try. Lord, I thank you, God, for my daughter's um, interest in folding origami, even though uh, I told her to shake the egg shaker and she forgot because she was folding origami. But I do thank you for that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for art and creativity. I thank you, Lord, for your word, that we have access to it, that we can read it. Um, that we may know you and be reminded of your truths, especially when, you know, our mind and our thoughts and our, our focus is on 
other things, Lord, and not you, Lord, because we can get distracted so easily, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, for these reminders to come back to you, God. Um, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to just share a bit of uh, our worship time with other people. Lord, I pray for the listener, whoever's hearing this right now. Lord, I pray for them, God, for whatever reason you're drawing them back to yourself. I pray, God, that they would come to know the real you. I pray, God, that they would uh, investigate these truths that I'm sharing today by, by, by accessing your word and reading it for themselves and asking your Holy Spirit to, to, to teach them your understanding and your truth. Lord, I, I just thank you, God, and how you work in and through your people um, that we may that we and others may come to know and follow you and be obedient even up to the point of death like we talked about yesterday through um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, God. Even though they didn't know what the outcome would be, they set their mind to not disobey you, God. I pray, Lord, that we will be good witnesses as well through our lives, through the words that come out of our mind, our mouths, through our actions, and in our heart, God. But we can't do this on our own. We need you, Lord, in our lives to transform us. Um, but we will take that step, God, in faith that you hear us and you will help us. And Lord, when we're scared and we don't know what to do next, God, help us to focus on you, Lord. And that's all we need to do is to abide in you. And that's probably what we're going to talk about tomorrow at this same time, God, Lord willing. Lord, I just thank you again for this time. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We ask that you continue to bring these truths to our mind throughout the day until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Amen.